In this little quick tutorial, we're going to be modelling this chair in Rhino 6 as an introductory exercise. And we have our final object here. So if I just expand, let's have a look at it. We have a single seat section, and then we have four simple legs. And this seat here has been made with the use of these curves here. Um, so we're simply just looking at using the loft command to create this lovely organic sweeping surface out of all these curves. So let's get started and um, get going on this for ourselves. So first thing I'm going to do is change my color, layer color, just to a brighter color so you can follow a little bit easier on the screen. So I've just changed my layer color to green and we need to start creating our first curve. So to do this, I'm going to go into double click on perspective, go back to my four views and I'm going to grab a polyline. Now if I click and hold on the polyline icon, I get an option of different ways of drawing straight lines. I'm going to go to line from midpoint and I want the middle of my line in the center of my file. So if I press zero and then press enter, type in zero, press enter, we've now snapped the center of this line into the zero, 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 the origin, the center of our file. And if I hold down shift on tab, I can then lock that position into being horizontal. So the width of my seat is going to be 400, type in 400, press enter. And if we zoom out, we can see we have our curve. Now to zoom out on all the viewports at the same time, if I right click on my little view icon in the top right here, it will recenter all of my views for me, which is nice and handy. So we have a straight line. We need to turn this into a nice curving profile of the seat. Now in order to do that, we have to add more control points. At the moment, this is a simple line with a point at the end, at each end. So if I turn on the control points at the moment, you can see we have one point at the end and one point at the beginning, two points. We need to add a lot more so that we can control the curvature. So I'm going to use the command called rebuild, select the line, type in rebuild and press enter. Now, if you've not covered geometry curvature in great detail, don't worry too much about the maths and the theory of it. We're just going to look at, um, you'll hopefully you'll be, you'll be, you'll demonstrate the practicalities of how this works through this exercise. So you'll get your head um, a little bit into this. So I'm rebuilding my curve and I'm going to turn it from a curve with two points to a curve with six points. And degree wise, I'm going to change it from a straight line, which is a degree curve of one to a curve with a degree of three. Um, we'll leave the theory of that for another day. Uh, if you're interested in it, jump back into it. It's quite important when we get into complex surface modeling to know about the degree of curvature and geometry. So this is our settings for the moment. We're deleting the input and we're creating our new object on current layer. Click OK. And now you can see our line has six points. Now I can see those control points. I've turned them on with F10. So if you do want to see those, click on the line, press F10, and you'll see your points. Right, so into the front view now, double click on my expand my front view. I'm going to select these two points and drag them down. So this is going to be the depth of my seat and I'm going to then increase the width using my gumball, which is this little widget here, and I'm looking at controlling the curvature of my seat profile. Perfect, so that's me started on my first curve, and I'm now going to do the back of the seat, so if I select the curve, go Control c Control v Copy-Paste, drag a copy out, and in the front view now, I'm going to use rotate this around 180 degrees and pull it up as well. Now, this is going to be quite a um, extreme change of curvature. So I turn my points on. I'm going to zoom into the front view so you can see a little bit better what's going on. So this is my top of my chair. I'm going to pull the curvature in and grab these points, pull them up. So if we're looking at the front view of our chair, this is roughly what I want to be able to see what my shape to look like. I have this base and I have the backrest. So if we go over to the right hand side view. We have our front and we have our back. And I'm going to just drag this back, give us a bit more depth to the chair. But actually, in terms of the 3D curvature-ness of this, um, curvature of this shape, I actually want my backrest to be reclined slightly. And those are our two starting curves. So we have our front and we have our back. Now, we can't 
Well, we could try and create a surface between these two curves. We could try and do a loft and we would get a straight section between these two curves. But we actually want this lovely curvature going between the two, as we saw in the example file. We want that lovely sweeping shape to go all the way around and through. So what we're going to do is create another curve. And this time, instead of copy paste, I'm going to hold down the Alt key, click on this little arrow and drag back. And you see that creates a duplicate. So let me do that in perspective once more. We're going to need to have a few of these. So one, two. And what I want to do is transition my curvature between these two curves. I want to change my shape. So for this first one, I'm going to rotate it slightly, pull it back up a little bit. And, and for the next one, grab those points and pull them back just a smidgen. I'm thinking that might need to be quite a bit. So I now have four curves. So my front, two middle curves, and a back curve. Now, in order to know what these curves should look like, I'm going to create my loft and do it with history recorded. And this is going to allow me to carry on editing my curves, but to see in real time how my surface is being affected by these curves. So I'm going to select another layer. Make sure I have record history selected down the bottom. If yours is not, you can always right click and choose always record history. I have this option on as default when I work, um, but some people find it helpful to turn it on or off manually. So right click, always record history, or at least make sure that record history is highlighted and bold. I'm now gonna go to surface and go to loft. So select my curves to loft, press enter, and you can see we immediately get um, a visual of how our surface, how our skin is doing at the moment with our seat. So I'm going to leave all my settings here as default. There are different types of loft. We can have a loose loft. We can have a tight loft. Um, straight sections, which is what we don't want, or uniform as well. So if I leave mine at normal, that's going to be helpful, and click OK. Now importantly, because I had record history activated, if I grab one of these curves now, move them, and let go. It'll update that surface for me. So with that in mind, let me just undo that. We can now go and turn on these points. I'm going to make sure my, in my layers, I lock the surface layer. If we drag the layer, it will break history. Um, we don't want that. So we need to make sure we don't touch this surface. We leave it exactly where it is. So if I lock that, I now can't accidentally drag this surface anywhere. So if I select my curves, let's just do a few at a time. So we'll start off with this one in the middle. Press F10, turn my points on, and I'm now going to go and drag these points to where I want them. So selecting my points and manipulating them, we can start to control how our surface is beginning to look. And it really is just as straightforward as that in terms of creating a surface using loft and history. Um, in this example of a chair, it's obviously quite straightforward um, and it's up to you as the designer to um, keep working until you get a surface or a shape that you really like. Um, I've done this a few times before, so I'm going to um, just work and make a few changes that I already know I like the look of. But um, if you want to explore the shape yourself and if there's anything that you like that you can start coming across or discovering as you're modeling, um, make changes. You don't have to end up with the same looking chair as I have on the screen. Um, you have some freedom to explore and create whatever type you will. And this chair will definitely be different to any of the others that I've made before. And that's the beauty of working this way. I find there's still a nice element of room for shape exploration, if we can use that word. So that's looking quite good with just a few clicks and we can obviously go on to refine this again and again. And all I'm doing, let's just look at that on the front curve for you a little bit simpler, selecting a curve, pressing F10, and I now have access to these control points. Now what I've done throughout this process is made sure I select both sides of a line to keep symmetry. Um, and that means if I pull it out, it affects both sides. If you just select one side and pull out the symmetry, it will still work, but you will then end up with an asymmetric shape. You can see now how we've deformed that side. 
So that just bear that in mind if your shape is symmetrical um, and you have got a line that goes across the symmetry plane. If you want to make a change, say to the, the corners, you don't just do one corner, you do both corners at the same time just to make sure that you don't get um, any of those problems of breaking that symmetry of your shape. Right, now you could spend five minutes on this or two hours depending on what your shape is and how you want it to look. Um, I should probably stop fiddling um, with this. I'm, I was fairly happy with it. I'll just return it to what it was. Perfect, so that's gonna be my surface. So the next step is to um, thicken it. At the moment, there is no thickness to this, to this seat. You can see it's, it's completely thin. It's just one singular surface. Um, so if I unlock that layer and select my white back, I'm going to give it some thickness. So to do this, there's a lovely command called offset surface. So the full command name is offset SRF. Just start, just start typing in offset and it will appear in the command list for you. Press enter and very simply asks you, what's the distance? How thick do you want it to be? I'm going to go with um, 12 mil, press enter. And I'm going to choose to have it solid as default. Yes. Corner options round and delete input. Yes. And flip or yes or no. So we can choose to flip the direction of our offset. At the moment, the surface is going to create another on the outside. If I choose to flip it, it will create it on the inside. So press enter and run through the command. You can get an idea, see what's happened. So we've now offset that surface with a thickness of 12 millimeters which is nice and uniform. And you can see that this outside surface has a lot more isocurves on it. It's much denser, um, but we have very nice clean geometry on the inside. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, it's still a good surface. So lastly on this seat, we're gonna just tidy this up, add some fillets. So click and hold on the bowline and I'm gonna go to fillet edges. Alternatively, you can go to solid, fillet edge, fillet edge. And I'm going to select these two edges here. Remember with selecting, if you click and drag left to right, the solid selection box is whatever is inside that box is selected. Whereas alternatively, right to left, the dotted box, whatever line touches that will be selected. So just bear that in mind when you are selecting. So grab those, select those edges nice and quickly. Press enter. I can use preview as well for fillet, which can be quite helpful sometimes. And I'm going to choose set all and set my fillet to, let's go with 12 millimeters, press enter, and I get a preview of what that will look like. I think that will do for now. Press enter, and we've filleted those edges. And then one final fillet on this section, we're going to repeat fillet, and this time we're going to go to chain edges, and I'm going to select this top edge, and it selected the entire edge for me, which is really good. Click on next. Or rather press enter because that's done click on chain edges again select the baseline that selected all those edges for me as well press enter and now i'm going to choose my um, options i think that's all okay for now if i press enter once more it will try and fill it with the last radius which was 12 which will be too much we will just change that in a minute so if the fillet does fail, you will get a viewport looking like this, where you can see just the fillet and the rest of our object disappears. If I go to settle, I will change that to two millimeters and that should be fine. Now filleting can be a little bit of a dark art in Rhino. Um, there's a lot of things to cover when it comes to filleting and making sure edges work and um, when you have complex transitions of surfaces. So I highly recommend looking at some of Rhino's training videos on Vimeo on filleting if this is um, something you need to cover a little bit more in detail. But for now, I've just added that little soft edge fillet, um, which just gives us a little bit more um, realism, but also just a little bit more detail to the shape. And there's also a little section at the back, which I would need to fillet in first. Um, but we'll leave that there for now. I'm going to hide my, um, my green curves. And let's finish this off with some legs. So back to the front view, straight line. Actually, the right hand view would probably be a little bit easier for this. 
In fact, let's change my mind again. Let's use all four views. And we just want to draw where we want our straight line, our legs to come out. Probably something like that in my front view. And then in my right hand view, I can select a point and angle. So I have one little leg here. And if I choose transform mirror, I can then create a mirror for the back leg, which looks very good. And I'm going to use the pipe command to create some legs. So select my line, type in pipe, alternatively you find this under the surface drop down and specify the diameter. So top diameter here I'm going to go is 20, press enter, and the bottom I'm going to go for is going to be 15, press enter. So I'll have a slight taper on those legs. Um, looking in 3D, I'm going to undo that. I think I'll change that dimension slightly. So go to pipe. Start radius I'm going to make a little bit larger. Let's say 30. Ending, we're going to make it 18. There we go, a little bit nicer. So repeat the same on the end. Start 30, press enter. End radius of 18, press enter. Again. And we have our curve. Now you'll notice that our, in order to get our transition here correct, the front leg is what I want. You can see it's going through my chair, so I can cut that out. But the back is not. Um, it's kind of ending short. So I either need to extend this surface or increase the length of that line. Now I've had history recording. So if I grab this line in the middle, turn on my control points, go to my side view, I can then just increase the length of that, drag it up vertically through my chair a little bit. And that will update my pipe. Perfect. So I'm going to use a Boolean cut here and then mirror them about and that will be our chair finished. So Boolean union, we have the option of Boolean split. So Boolean is just mathematical um, way of dealing with objects and joining and combining them. So if I grab Boolean split, select surfaces or poly surfaces to split. Those are my purple legs. Press enter when done. Press enter. Select cutting surfaces or poly surfaces. That's my chair. Select my chair, press enter. Looks like nothing's happened. If I drag a selection box over this area, remember whatever's inside this box will be selected when I let go. We now see we have four separate pieces. And if I press delete, they're gone. And I'm left with my legs perfectly cut out. And if I grab both of them, go to my front view, we can then do a mirror. And if I choose zero as the center of my mirror, press enter, hold down tab, and click. We now have our four legs. And there you have it, a very quickly model chair um, in Rhino 6. And using the loft command with a few other extra bits using point modeling. So keep checking out videos on Rhino and tutorials and um, working your way through the tools, but hopefully that's been helpful and won't take you too long to tackle yourself. Happy modeling.